Hello, and welcome back to Teton Technology. In this video, we will be doing an SEO tutorial. You might be asking yourself, what are we covering in this tutorial? First, an SEO audit. Then, I will show you how to do keyword research with two tools, one Ahref and the second SEM brush. I'll walk you through a WordPress website. Structure a WordPress website, how to use Yoast SEO and the two components, SEO score, readability score. And finally, I will show you how to integrate Google Tag Manager into your WordPress site. And let's do an SEO audit. Jumping into our SEO audit, the first thing that we're gonna do is go to moz.com and get the free domain analyzer. We're gonna put in our website and then it gives us four features. One is domain authority, which is how Google ranks your website. Two is linking root domains, which are links coming from your web page. And then three is the ranking keywords. And finally is the spam score. Next is we're looking at the top pages by links. This should be the framework for the structure of your SEO strategy. So you're building from these websites. What this basically means is that these domains do a great job when it comes to your links, internal links and external links, otherwise known as backlinks. A great strategy for building backlinks is doing something simple like creating a button that goes to your Google account if you have a five-star rating. That's a great way to build a backlink. Another great way is to use YouTube. Only 9% of small businesses utilize YouTube for their marketing. Everyone focuses on pay-per-click. A fundamental element of an SEO strategy is the keywords. You want to start with a keyword and then you have the rank. This is how well the keyword is ranking according to Google. So SmartLock Installation Boca Raton, Florida is ranking at number six. So if you put that keyword into Google, it will be at the sixth position on the page. So that's not terrible. Everyone knows that you don't go past the first page when it comes to a keyword or looking for a website or anything like that. Next, we're looking at the competitor. So we have the domain authority and the visibility per month. So one competitor would be keylessaccesslocks.com. And the visibility is 0.95. So again, that would be per month. Some insights that can be drawn from this SEO report go back to the ranking keywords. With 18 ranking keywords, we know that we can build upon that list when it comes to content, as well as make more ranking keywords based upon that list that we have. The ranking keywords aren't high because this is local SEO. A major difference between technical SEO and local SEO is let's say that you are a restaurant in you know, Romeo, Michigan. Or in this case, you are a locksmith in Boca Raton, Florida. So you want your keywords as we're moving on to keywords and keyword tools. You want your keyword list to focus on the sub keyword as we've done here but when we focus on that sub keyword we might even leave out the city because we know that in our seo wordpress or you know whatever tool we're using we're not going to put we're putting in boca raton right we're going to put in the local seo if we look for the sub keyword as far as keyword difficulty that's easy and high volume, you might want to put in the sub keyword as we're doing here and not put Boca just to make sure that our sub keyword has a keyword difficulty of easy. Because with Ahref, which is the tool we're using here, the keyword difficulty is how easy it is for your keyword to rank on the top page of Google. And the volume is how many people are searching for that keyword per month. So in both of those examples, as you move on to our next tool, SEM Rush, we're using local SEO. 
Local SEO focuses on our sub keyword, which we're ranking for here, as well as our location. SEM Rush, as you see here, gives you a lot more than Ahrefs. It gives you the backlinks, it gives you the authority score, it tells you about your organic search traffic, as well as the countries that are searching for your content. Another feature of SEM Rush is when it comes to keywords, you can build an entire keyword set list and save that list and it will give you a more robust search without having to, in Ahrefs case, individually input keywords one by one by one. Some other features are SERP, which again has to do with organic search. So if we put our keyword in our keyword overview tool, SEM Rush will give us insights. In this case, people are not searching for that specific keyword, so there isn't any search volume. Like I was mentioning earlier, what you can do in the case of local SEO is make sure that your sub keyword has high search volume, has low keyword difficulty, and then when it comes to the local SEO, you can just input the city and WordPress as part of your key phrase as you see here. Another feature of good SEO is writing meta descriptions which we'll focus on later. Now moving on to the structure of a website, you want to make sure that the text is a certain length, 300 words per section, all within subheadings when it comes to the structure. And moving on to just research, another tip when it comes to keyword tools is to use both SEM Rush and Ahrefs in conjunction because it will help you with search volume. It both will give you know SEM Rush will give you more tips. The Ahrefs won't. They both have a free package to use. So if you use both in conjunction, it can help you in your search. Like I mentioned earlier, some other features of green SEO is a meta description that uses the keyword at least once. And as you see in the structure of the website, the sections, like that first section that you see here, needs to be at least 300 words. Some other features of good readability is transition words, you want to make sure that your sentence structure is well defined and in your writing you want to define subheadings if you don't define the subheading and the way to do that is in your text editor you go to the side and it normally will be set as paragraph and you highlight the word and set that as a subheading it gives you greed readability and it just gives also a a good user experience Another thing is with your writing, you want to make sure to avoid passive voice. If you don't know what passive voice is, if this video gets 100 likes, I will make a tutorial on passive versus active voice. And again, as you see in this pros, there is multiple subheadings. Within those subheadings, the text within it needs to be within 200 to 300 words. 300 words at the absolute maximum. So now what we're going to do is go to a page that has read readability and work with it here for you so that you can get an idea of how to make a read readability green. So the first thing you want to do is go to Yoast.com and look for the transition words. These transition words will help to structure your writing. You want to have a good amount of transition words in your writing. Another thing to help with passive voice, because you saw it, passive voice is what another thing that made it read. If you go to Grammarly.com, it can help you with your editing, and it can also help you with setting your writing to active voice instead of passive voice, as we're doing here.
Transition words, and you also want to make sure not to repeat transition words. For instance, furthermore can be used in multiple ways. You can use it as moreover, or you can use additionally. By the way, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And this tutorial series is based on a great deal that I have running right now a hundred dollars for me to integrate and teach you how to use all of these tools and integrate SEO into your WordPress website. I can also do the same thing for Wix Wiz tool as well as Shopify. All of these CRM tools work about the same and all require the same tools and the same tips when it comes to both local SEO and technical as well. I will walk you through how to edit content within your website, how to do prompt engineering, how to structure each individual page, give you tips for social media, how to use vidIQ when it comes to your YouTube or any kind of video content that you're making. This content was edited in CapCut, so I can also help you with any video editing or video content that you want to do for your SEO strategy. I will sit you down and walk you through how to use keyword research tools, how to create an Excel spreadsheet that works with these tools, how to use analytics tools like I'm going to do later in this tutorial, how to, you know, you name it. There's so much that you can gain for just a hundred dollars to have me integrate SEO into your website and teach you all the tips of the trade for a hundred dollars. Get it now. Moving on.
So another thing, like I mentioned earlier, that can help with making your readability green is not only integrating these transition words like we're doing here, but putting in the subheadings. Subheadings are something that so many people mistake to do. But as we're doing here, you want to have a high volume of transition words. When you think you're using too many transition words, use another. Transition words help you with having green readability. Obviously, you don't want to keyword stuff or transition word stuff in this case, but transition words do a great job in separating your pros from SEO content to blog or article type content. Because something to note is SEO blog content focuses on the keyword and goes from there. Blog content focuses on the topic. The topic might stem from the keyword, but there is a distinction. See, as we're going to do in this page, the keyword that we use, our search keyword phrase, needs to be used at least four times. It needs to be put in the subheadings as well as in the content. When you're writing a blog on a certain topic, the certain topic doesn't need to be stressed over and over and over again. Normally, you're writing more synonyms for the topic, right? So let's say the topic is Boston Celtics basketball. You're probably going to use different keywords that stem from that topic than the keyword itself. So that's an important distinction to note when it comes to implementing keywords in your website as well as your blog strategy. And again, as you see here, it is a meticulous process, but we need to go through each individual paragraph to add the transition word, to fix the grammar if it has passive voice. Because sometimes Grammarly does not give you helpful tips when it comes to passive versus active voice. So you just need to sometimes read it yourself and you can find errors with AI content. That is an all type of content. That is the same with prompt engineering. You need to edit the content. I know that a lot of companies these days want to create content in high volume. But if you're going to do that, first of all, you might run into issues with Google and you're going to have to integrate that content back into Zero GPT. But even in a world where Google did not punish you, the content that AI is going to spit out it's not written in great format, it's not content that is SEO structured, and overall, it's content that if you were to grade it, it's a very low score. So you need to edit the content that you're writing, even if you're using grammar. And remember, when it comes to a green readability, the things that we're looking for is subheadings, a high volume of transition words, active, versus passive voice. And finally, you wanna make sure that the structure of your content is not written too long and it's not too short. A good number is about 300 words on the page. Or 300 words within each subheading, max. So obviously you can have less. Again, I'd focus between 200 and 300 words, depending on what you're writing. In this case, you know, you want to focus on the user experience, so the user does not want to read a lot of information when it comes to commercial locksmith services. They really just want to make sure that their locks work, that the key works, and that everything works well, so they can get back to business. So, again, you want to focus on your target market, you want to focus on the user experience. It is not like writing blogs or articles, it is more the technical SEO, uh, focusing on the user experience, but at the same time, make sure that you're structuring your content in a way that fits WordPress readability, but has a strong user experience. Because at the end of the day, you can have green SEO all you want, but if you have high bounce rate because the user experience is not good, then it doesn't even matter. You hear a lot of times people say, well, I don't want to integrate video into my WordPress site because it doesn't do a great job with ranking for Google 
because Boo can only read and write. And that is true, but at the same time, you want to have organic traffic. SEO is about organic search traffic. So you want to structure your website, you want to create content, you want to do things that garner organic traffic. So at the end of the day, if you are garnering traffic, then it doesn't matter as much about having green SEO or green readability. You want to have a conjunction of all of them to have a good strategy. So sometimes it is impactful to integrate video into your website because it will get a larger audience of people to your website as well as building a backlink because if you have 3,000, 4,000 or even 200 views on a video, maybe 30 or 200 or 100 of those people, I'd say closer to 30 to 20 just based on the law of averages, but still that's a lot more than paying for clicks or you know, creating a blog strategy that takes time. So again, you wanna focus on the target market, the user experience, and overall creating content that garners high search traffic as well as having green SEO and green readability. Green SEO consists of your slug having your key phrase, your SEO title having your key phrase, and as you see here, your meta description not being too long because your meta description should be about a sentence because that sentence is what shows up when they are searching your keyword. So you want to have your keyword in the meta description and you want to make sure that it's catchy. Going back to the readability, again, you want to go through each individual page. You want to input your transition word as well as just read over it and make sure that it is active voice instead of passive voice. Without analytics, you will not know if what you're implementing is doing good or not. So let's integrate Google Tag Manager. It doesn't matter if you're using Google Search Console or Google Analytics. These steps need to be taken to integrate Google into a WordPress site. First, you want to go to plugins and install HFCM. And then you're going to have a header tag and a body tag. You're going to search Google Tag Manager and Google and log in or create an account. You create the account for your website. We already have it done here. You're gonna choose web and then you're gonna create it. Once it is created, it's gonna give you a tag. Our tag is already created, but if it wasn't, you go into your account. So you see here, we have one added. You go to tags and you'd create a new tag. Once you have your tag, you're gonna get a snippet. You're gonna copy the snippet and the head tag, as well as the body tag. And as you see in our WordPress plugin, when we go to the head tag and we scroll all the way down, we see our snippet. For you, you wanna paste in that snippet as well as go back to Google Tag Manager and in the body or the footer, in our case, you're gonna copy paste that snippet and there's a snippet there. Once our snippets are both set up, you're going to apply or save the changes. It's HFCM.
in order to install it, you go to plugins, you're going to search that. Click add new plugin. And that's how you set up Google Tag Manager.